Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can make glitter backgrounds and text in Photoshop. Before we get started on this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you can create glitter like this in Photoshop. Not only are you going to see how to create the glitter background, but how you can apply it to text inside Photoshop. To get started with the glitter effect, I'm going to choose File New and I'm just going to work on a 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel document. And I'm going to make sure that the background contents are transparent and that we're working in RGB color mode. I'll click OK. Now we're going to fill this document with a texture. So I'm going to choose Layer and then New Fill Layer Pattern. Now it's critical that you use this way of applying a pattern to a layer. So I'm just going to click Pattern and click OK. And now it fills with the last pattern that I was working with, but I want a different pattern. So I'm going to click the drop down list here and then click on the settings here. And I want to go and get the Texture Fill 2 pattern set. This is shipped with Photoshop. So you want Texture Fill 2, so I'm just going to click on that. And then you're going to click Append because you want to append it to your existing patterns and not overwrite any patterns that you had previously created. Now the pattern we want is the very last one in the Texture Fill 2 series. It's called Web and it's a 200 by 200 pixel pattern. Quite a bit smaller than the document that we're working in. So I'm going to click on this and we're going to scale it at 100% and click OK. And if we look at this pattern, you'll see that it is relatively obvious that this pattern is a repeat. It's a 200 by 200 pixel block, so there's five versions of the pattern across the document and five down, and you can see the repeats. But that's okay, because in a minute we're going to destroy them. And we're going to do that all over again. Layer, New Fill Layer, Pattern. We're going to click OK. We want to reapply this web pattern so we don't have to make any changes at this point because this pattern is already in the box here. But we do want to change the scaling. I'm going to set the scaling down to something a little bit bigger than half. We don't want it to be half, but we do want it to be between 50% and 100. And I'm just going to type 60 and just click OK. And now again, you can see that this repeat is very, very obvious. The next thing we're going to do is to destroy that repeat. We're going to do that using the Clone Stamp tool. So I'm going to click on the Clone Stamp tool and I'm going to set my brush. So I'm going here to the Brushes panel and I want to select a hard round brush. So I'm going to click on this. It's 100% hardness. That's the bit that's really important in this dialog. So I'm just going to click outside of here. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start doing the cloning, but I can't clone on a fill layer, so I have to make this layer into a regular layer. I'm going to do that by just adding two empty layers to my layers palette. I'm going to put each empty layer underneath one of these fill layers. So I'm going to layer it so I've got a fill layer, an empty layer, a fill layer, and an empty layer. And all I'm going to do is merge these down. So I'm going to click on the fill layer and I'm going to press Control or Command E just to merge that down. And what it does in merging it down is get rid of the mask and get rid of the fill layer so it's now just a regular raster layer. I'm going to click here, do the same thing, Control or Command E to merge it down. And now I've got two regular raster layers. But I had to create the fill layer to be able to scale that pattern correctly. So now I'm working on the bottommost layer. I'm going back to my Clone Stamp tool. I'm going to just size my brush a little bit larger. And I'm going to Alt click to sample from this layer. And now I can go ahead and just paint over the image. And what I'm trying to do here is just to destroy the concept of that looking like a repeating pattern. So all I want to do is just move things around a little bit so that the pattern does not look like a repeating pattern. So we can't see those lines through the document. Now I have a line set on. That's a checkbox for a line turned on. And I've got a hard brush. And you want a hard brush because if you use a soft one, you're going to destroy the pattern's complexity and its sharpness, and you don't want to do that. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I don't need to. I just need to make it not look as if it were a repeating pattern. Then we're going to click on the next layer, which is the top layer here, and do exactly the same thing. Make sure the top layer is targeted. Again, Clone Stamp Tool. Again, 
Alt or Option click on the image to grab a paste to sample and then we're just going to go ahead and destroy this repeating pattern. So literally I'm picking up a paste and then just swirling the brush around a little bit just to try and destroy it. Now in a second we're going to merge these two layers together so if you haven't totally destroyed this pattern effect it won't matter because provided you've destroyed it on the layer underneath by the time you merge the two together it's just not going to look like a repeating pattern at all. Okay, So I'm going to call that good for now. And what I'm going to do is go to the Layers palette which you can get to by choosing Window Layers but of course you probably already had that open now and we're just going to instead of Normal we're going to blend these two layers together using the Multiply Blend mode and that will give us a darker look which is pretty much what we want for our glitter. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a color fill layer. So I'm going to add a brand new layer to the document. It's going in at the very top and I'm going to fill that with the color that I want basically for my glitter. So I'm going to create some orange glitter. So I've just sampled orange as my foreground color and I'm going to Alt Backspace or Option Delete on the Mac to fill this layer with the color. And then I'm going to set the blend mode for this top color layer to soft light. And basically there's our glitter. Now if you want it to be a little bit darker it's possible to do just that. So what I'm going to do is add another layer on top and again I'm going to fill this with our same texture layer. New fill layer, pattern, click OK and I'm going to add the pattern in at 100% and click OK. And this time I'm going to blend it with a subtraction blend mode. So I'm going down here to subtract and then I'm just going to decrease the opacity of this down to about 30%. And that will just darken that effect. So if you want it a little bit lighter or a little bit darker you can create that yourself. Now if this is not the color that you want you can just change your fill layer or you can at any stage just add a adjustment layer over the top of everything. Layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Just going to click OK and let's go and drag our hue saturation adjustment over here and just by altering the hue I can walk this around and get any color glitter that I want. So let's settle actually for some purple glitter. Now if you want to make this into a repeating pattern you can do that very easily. What I'm going to do is actually take this purple glitter and I'm going to make a brand new layer with it on. So I'm going to press Control Alt Shift E on the Mac that's Command Option Shift E to create a new layer that is a merged layer. So on this top layer is everything that is on the layers below but a flattened version of it. I'm going to use that to make my repeating pattern swatch. Now this has to be a tiling repeating pattern swatch. So with this layer selected and knowing that I started with a 1000 by 1000 pixel image, let's choose Filter, Other, Offset. I'm going to set my offset values to half of my image width and height. So that's going to be 500, 500. Since my image was 1000 by 1000, 500 by 500 is exactly what I need. And I'm setting this to wrap around and click OK. Now this is my repeating pattern swatch. If you see lines through this pattern and you're more likely to see them across this midline or down here or perhaps around the center, if you see anything that you don't like at this point, just clone it out. Now I don't see anything I don't like but what I would do if I did is alt click on an area and then just tap to remove anything that looks like a pattern repeat line. But taking care not to touch the pixels around the edge because they're the ones that are actually going to create this pattern for us. And now that we have this pattern I'm going to choose select all and then edit define pattern. I'm going to call this purple glitter. Now having made that, if I wanted to make a document that was quite a bit larger, for example for scrapbook paper, let's choose File New, 
and in this case I'm going to make it 3600 by 3600 that will print at 300 dpi 12 inch paper just click OK and now I can choose layer new fill layer pattern click OK and my glitter pattern has now been applied to this larger sheet of paper so you can see that I'm getting just a little bit of repetition in that pattern background so I'm just going to click OK and what I would do at this point is again come back in with my clone stamp tool I'm going to flatten this layer merge it with an empty layer underneath control or command E back in with my clone stamp tool again I'm going to be using a hard brush it's essential that you use a hard brush so you don't get a sort of fluffiness in your glitter pattern and I'm just going to pick up a few bits here and there to just destroy any semblance that this has been made using a repeating pattern and it really is just a few clicks to get rid of any impression that this is repeating and there's my scrapbook paper made from my glitter pattern now that we've made our pattern and so you've seen that you can use it for for example scrapbook paper let's go ahead and see how we would use it to create glitter text to create the glitter text I've opened a brand new document and I've filled it with my glitter pattern and I've just flattened this down to a single layer now I'm going to go ahead and grab my text tool and add some text to the document now the text is very small so I'm just going to enlarge it to do that I'm just clicking in the type size box and pressing shift and up arrow to enlarge it and then I'm going to choose a font for it I'm going to use a font called Channel Regular. Now I think I've overestimated the font size, so let's just reduce it given the document size. And I'm going to select the font and just move it into position. Now I don't need to worry about the font color because I'm just going to turn this into a clipping mask. So I'm going to move the font below the glitter layer. So the text is below the glitter layer and I'm going to create a clipping mask so by clicking on the top layer I can choose layer create clipping mask or I can do it by just holding the alt or option key and positioning my mouse between the top layer and the text layer and when I click I'm going to create this clipping mask which then just masks out the glitter layer to the shape of the text now that's glitter text but we can do a little bit more to help it look a little bit more realistic one of the things I'm going to do is drop a new layer in at the bottom of the layer stack here and I'm going to press control backspace on the PC command delete on the Mac to fill it with the background color so here we now have our glitter text on top of a black background but the glitter text will look a little bit better if there's a border around it so I'm going to click the text layer and I'm going to click here on the style icon I'm going to add a stroke I want to just add my stroke so I can see it right now so I'm just going to change it to white just for a minute and I want to size the stroke to around six points and I want it to be outside the letter forms now I don't actually want this to be the fill color I want it to be a gradient so I'm going to click on gradient and now I'm going to go and find a gradient to use now there are some metallic gradients that are shipped with Photoshop and you get to these if you don't have them already in your gradient swatch here by clicking the settings icon here and just load your metals gradient so this is the one I want it's just not quite the way I want it to look but I've selected it now I'm going to click on the gradient swatch itself so I can now go and do something with it and as soon as I click on the white and what I'm going to do is just add a whole lot of stripes here but because I've clicked on the white every time I click on this line just below the gradient I'm going to add a white marker and so I want to add quite a few white markers here because in a minute I'm going to click on the gray or the silvery sort of color and come in here and alternate these this is going to build up a more complex gradient of alternating colors
Now, I don't need to be too fussy about how this gradient looks. It doesn't have to be really even because all I'm using it for is to just add some variety to the outside stroke that I've added to this particular piece of text. I'm just going to click OK. And at this point, I think I'm just going to bring down the size a little bit. Maybe to two or three, actually. Let's just type in three there. Now, I could rotate the gradient if I wanted to, but I definitely do want a linear gradient. So I want to see those lines through the stroke that I've just added to the shape. So I'm just going to click OK. And now to finish off, what I want to do is to add some sparkle. So I'm going to click here to add a new layer at the top of the layer stack. I'm going to make sure I'm painting with white. I'm going to grab my brush tool. Now there is a set of brushes that comes with Photoshop. It's called a sort of brushes. So if you don't already have those added, click here on a sort of brushes and click append to append them to your brush collection. Now I've already appended them. The one I'm looking for here is the one that has 50 underneath it. It's a small starburst, but you'll identify it most easily by the number 50 underneath it. So I'm just going to click away from this. I'm going to make sure it's sized to about the size I need it to be. And this is pretty good actually at 50, I think. And then I'm going to just click a couple of times. Now this brush has quite a deal of opacity built into it, which means it doesn't paint at 100% opacity. It's not white paint, if you like. It's sort of see-through. And even though I'm using the normal blend mode and an opacity of 100%, it's not painting at 100%. So what I'm doing is instead of just hitting the brush once, is I'm going to hit it more than once probably a couple of times if I want a really big sparkle, once if I want just an average sort of sparkle. So I'm going to do that in some key places on the glitter text, in particular in the areas where I've lightened up the stroke using this metallic gradient. So I want to make sure that that's sort of shining at that point, if you like, to indicate that this really is a glittery, shiny piece of text. So I'll just add a few glitter stars through the text. And there we have our finished glitter text effect. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.